and welcome. My name is Adrian, I use masculine pronouns, and this is usually the Freakish Lemon video podcast. This video is different than the usual content here on this channel. This video will take you through the process of machine knitting a Redford sweater, a pattern by Julie Hoover. This is a paid-for pattern which can be found on Ravelry, the link to which will be down below here on YouTube or somewhere around here if you're watching this somewhere else. The first thing to do, as with any knitting pattern, is read the pattern over for yarn information, yardage, sizing, fit, and the techniques that will be used. The Redford is a pieced sweater in stockinette, reverse stockinette, and ribbing, which makes it a perfect candidate for machine knitting. I had hand knit this pattern before with mixed results, due to my inexperience, so I went straight into caking up the yarn to swatch. I used Green Mountain Spinnery's Lana Sock Yarn in a grey color. This is a toothy, kind of rustic fingering weight yarn. I first swatched on my Brother Amino KH836E standard gauge flatbed knitting machine. Then I washed, blocked, and measured the swatch. I knit my swatch at dial setting 9, 81 stitches by 80 rows. Doing a swatch by machine makes it pretty easy to measure. While I was knitting the swatch, I added in little scrap yarn markers 5 stitches in from either edge every 10 rows. To measure the stitch gauge, I just needed to put my ruler between two parallel markers on this swatch and record the measurement in inches. I know that between each of the parallel markers is 71 stitches. I took that measurement in three different places, divided the stitches by the measurement to get the stitches per inch for each section of the swatch, then took the average of these three numbers. I did the same for the row count. From orange scrap yarn to orange scrap yarn is 80 rows. I took the length measurement in three different places and found the average rows per inch. My swatch gauge was 6.51 stitches per inch and 10.4 rows per inch. I multiplied each number by four to compare it to the pattern gauge over four inches. The pattern gauge is 26 stitches by 36 rows, over 4 inches, so my gauge in this swatch was tighter than their recommended gauge. So I decided to do another swatch at dial setting 
9 plus plus, which is just below the largest gauge setting on the brother machine at dial setting 10. My brother machine struggled with the second swatch in this toothy fingering white yarn, so I tried a swatch on my larger gauge machine. This machine is my Silver Reed LK150 mid gauge flatbed knitting machine, and is typically used for sport, DK, and worsted weight yarns. I knit my swatch on dial setting 2, which has a similar gauge to the dial setting 10 on the brother standard gauge knitting machine. Here are the numbers for my LK150 swatch. This came out to 6.29 stitches per inch and 10.32 rows per inch, which was closer to the pattern gauge. It was close enough that I used the schematic measurements of the back piece at the bust to determine what size to make. I was aiming for the third size in this pattern with a finished bust measurement of 46 and a quarter inches total. I used the bust measurement from the back piece schematic for the third size and determined that I needed the stitch count from the fourth size to get my desired end result. Then I cast on the back piece. The back piece is, in my opinion, the easiest to start with in machine knitting because it typically doesn't have a lot of shaping. Once it's done, it can be blocked and compared to a garment that fits me well to determine if my numbers worked out. Unfortunately, during this first try, I didn't like the fabric I was getting. I also didn't alternate skeins, and there was a very noticeable line where I changed from one skein to another. So I did another swatch, this time on dial 3 on the LK150. This came out to 5.73 stitches per inch and 9.41 rows per inch, which is nearly on point for the pattern gauge. By my new calculations, I could use the patterns numbers for the third size to get a finished 46 and a quarter inch bust measurement. So I cast on the back piece again. Once finished, I removed the cast-on waste yarn, then washed and blocked the piece. I laid this back piece over a sweater that I had made previously and was able to line up the shoulders. Since the shoulders matched, and that's the hardest part to fit me properly, I continued on to make the other pieces of the sweater using the measurements from my fourth swatch. All six pieces of the sweater were cast on using waist yarn, a nylon ripcord, an e-wrap cast on, and then were knit in plain stockinette, which for machine knitting means that you move the carriage from left to right and right to left without manipulating the stitches on the needles in any way. Any increases or decreases used were the basic increases and decreases that can be found in the manual that comes with your knitting machine. I should note that the Redford sweater front piece does have a decorative detail at the front collar, but due to the way that I did my increases and decreases in this section, it is not visible on my machine knit piece. I believe this would be an easy correction to make, but I did not go back to correct this error on my sweater piece in this video. All the finished pieces of the sweater were washed and blocked, and then I began seaming. First, I seamed the shoulders for the front and back, then the side panels to the front and back pieces. I seamed each sleeve separately. Because of the side panels on this sweater, I had to set in the sleeve round edge to round edge. In other sweater constructions, the sleeve can be sewn to the front and back flat, then you can seam up the arm and down the side in one continuous line. 
Per the pattern, I then picked up the round neck edge to hand knit the ribbed collar. I could have done this by machine before seaming everything together, but I was playing yarn chicken with the yarn from my first two swatches by this point, and didn't want to risk running out. I did the same for each of the sleeve cuffs. I picked up the stitches with double pointed needles and knit the cuffs concurrently to make sure I had enough yarn to finish both. Another wash and block to set the finishing, and my Redford sweater was complete. This version of the sweater did end up fitting me well, which I am very pleased about, and now that I know what settings to use, I would happily make this sweater by machine again. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking through it to watch to the end. And let me know if you have any questions regarding any of my explanations. I'm not prepared to necessarily teach you how to machine knit, but if anything was unclear in the process, please let me know so that I can encourage any interest in machine knitting. As always, you can find me at all the fun places as Freakish Lemon. Links will be down below here on YouTube or somewhere around here if you're watching this somewhere else. And that's gonna do it from me. Goodbye. <laughs>